Uh, these are exercises for chapter three, section two. Okay, so uh, we had just done some examples of the 68, 95, 99.7 rule and zero additional ones. So the lifespan of refrigerators are normally distributed with a mean of 14 years and a standard deviation of 2.5 years. So we're going to go through and we're going to label our axes. Again, this horizontal axis is the lifespan of fridges. Okay. And we have a mean here at 14. One standard deviation above the mean would be 14 plus 2.5, so it'll be 16.5. Two standard deviations above the mean would be 16.5 plus 2.5, which would be 19. And then three standard deviations above the mean would be 19 plus 2.5, so it'll be 21.5, okay? Similarly, going below the mean, we go 14 minus 2.5, which is 11.5. 11 11.5 minus 2.5, which is nine. And then nine minus 2.5, which is 6.5, okay? We know that 68% are within one standard deviation of the mean. We know that 95% of my fridges lifespans are within two standard deviations of the mean. And we know that within three standard deviations of the mean, we have 99.7% of the lifespans of refrigerators. Okay, so let's go through and answer these questions. And we're gonna do these, if they're not straightforward, we're gonna do them a little bit differently than we did in the previous videos, okay? So you can kind of see that we have these regions that correspond to areas, but it would also be nice if we had these chunks like between 14 and 16.5 16 years, if I knew that area. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go down below and I'm going to find out additional area chunks from this distribution that we can utilize to answer our questions, okay? So we have our normal distribution, one standard deviation, and that's 68%, two standard deviations, and that's 95%, between three standard deviations is 99.7%, Okay, so let's look at just looking at this region right here. Okay, so we can kind of see with our practice of looking at half of stuff. So between one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above the mean, that's 68%. And if I looked at just half of that, because that's what this shaded pink region is, that's just half of that, that's going to be 34%, similarly on the other side, because they're symmetric, okay? Now let's look at one a little bit trickier. Let's look at this chunk, just this chunk right there. Okay, and again, this is the mean, mean plus one standard deviation, mean plus two standard deviation, mean plus three standard deviations, okay? So this one isn't as straightforward, right? So let's kind of think about what we have. So this is kind of looking like if we had this region, okay? And we had this whole region, from there to there, Okay, and then we subtracted this region, oops, okay, if we subtracted this middle region here, okay, 
what would we have left over right now? Okay, so take this whole four chunks of the distribution and we take out away these two center chunks. What we'd have is we'd have the regions between here and there. Okay, that's what we would have. So we know this one is 95% minus 68%. And if I go 95 minus 68, I'll get 27, okay? So we'll get this 27%. But this isn't what we want yet. We only want half of that region. So we're gonna have 27 divided by two, and that's gonna give me 13.5%, okay? And then again, the other half, the symmetric region, will also be 13.5%. Okay. So let's see what we can do to find the next part that we care about. Okay. So I want to care about, I want to find out what is the area of this chunk right there, okay? Similarly, so you can see that it goes to the three standard deviations. So I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna have my third standard deviation indicated on my distributions up here. So I'm gonna have my region from my third standard deviations above and below the mean. And then I'm gonna take away two standard deviations, right? So this is going to be my 99.7% minus my 95%. And what would be left over would be just this region. Okay, so there's one, two, here's three, one, two. So here's the mean, right? One, two, three. It would just be the region right there and right there. That's what would be left over. And what is in those two regions is going to be 4.7%. But again, I only want half of this. So what's 4.7 divided by two? It's 2.35%. Okay. Then again, my symmetry, that region is there. So now we have just one little extra tail to figure out. How much is in those tails outside of 300 deviations width from the mean? So let's go through and try to figure that out. Okay. So here, what you can think of is you want to think of this entire distribution. How much is underneath that entire distribution? Well, that's going to be 100%, right? And then you want to take away the region. That's one, two, three. That is within three standard deviations. It's 99.7%. And that's going to just be the small region. I don't know if my pen is small enough from there and there outwards forever. Okay. And that's going to be 0.3% but we only want half of that. So it's gonna be 0.15% and 0.15%. And what happens is now that we have these extra little regions that are these chunks that we have those percentages, we can go through and find a lot of interesting shapes, okay? So we're gonna refer back to this a couple of times as we go through and do our problems. And you can see how you can do it, you can do it how we did in the last video, kind of think about the regions and figure it out each time, or you can memorize these additional proportions. Either way is a good way to do it. Okay. So now let's go back and look at what we want. So we want this region that is below 11.5. Okay. So if you come down and look at my distribution that I just figured out, 
11.5 is one standard deviation below. So I want that region. So I'm going to have 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0.15. So I have 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0.15, which is 16%. And we did that a different way in the other videos. Okay. Now let's look at this next question. It says, what percentage of refrigerators have a lifespan between 9 and 16.5 years? So we'll have between 9 and 16.5 years. And here in this region, you can see how helpful it is to have these proportions already kind of figured out for these different like chunks of the distribution, okay? So I'm gonna shade it down over here and you, so you can see, okay? So we have nine was two standard deviations below to one standard deviation above. So we're gonna have from two below to one above. So we're going to have 13.5 plus 34 plus 34, which is 81.5%. Okay. And then what percentage of refrigerators have a lifespan below 9 or more than 16.5? So if you look at part C and D, D is just what area is not being shaded from C. So remember the whole distribution is 100%, so it's gonna be 100% minus 81.5, which is gonna give me 18.5%, okay? Then this last question, it says, um, what is the proportion, what percentage of refrigerators have a lifespan above 21.5, so that corresponds to 21.5, it's right here, and onwards, and that's going to just be the region right here, so it'll just be 0.15%. Okay. Alright, let's go to the last exercise but we're going to refer back to this distribution for this this one too okay so elena conducts an experiment in which she fills up the gas tank on her toyota 40 times and records the miles per gallon for each fill up she determines that the mean miles per gallon for her car is 24.6 miles per gallon and the standard deviation is 3.2 miles per gallon. So again, we're going to go through and measure this. And this is going to be the miles per gallon on the horizontal axis. So this will be um, 24.6. This one is going to be plus 24.6 plus 3.2, which is 27.8, plus 3.2, and we get 31 plus 3.2, and we'll get 34.2. Similarly, from the mean, subtract 3.2, and you get 21.4. Subtract 3.2 again, and you get 18.2. Subtract 3.2 again, and you get 15. Okay? So, we want to know what percentage of the time will Elena get below 18.2 miles per gallon. And then we're gonna come up here and you see that it is one, two standard deviations below the mean. So I'm gonna come up here and actually label this a little bit better so we can see it more easily. This one is mean minus standard deviation, minus two standard deviations, and mean minus three standard deviations. So we want the region that corresponds to less than two standard, so more than two standard deviations below the mean, okay? So it's going to be this region from here onwards. So we're going to have 2.35 plus 0.15.
And again, you could definitely do it by looking at the regions that we care about and being clever like we did in the first video. That would be totally great. Similarly great, memorizing this distribution and referring back to it. Or making the distribution up each time and referring back to it. So what is the percentage of time, what percent of time will Elena get more than 27.8 miles per gallon? So there's 27.8. And that's above one standard deviation above the mean. So that's going to correspond to, here's one standard deviation above the mean right here. And we're going to go above that. So it's going to be 13.5 plus 2.3 flies plus 0.15. which is 16%, okay? What percent of the time will Elena get between 15 and 24 miles per gallon? So it's gonna be from here to 24.6 miles per gallon. It's gonna be this region here. So again, looking at our region, it's going to be, so this is one, two, three, seven divisions below the mean to the mean. So we'll have one, two, three, so 2.35 plus 13.5 plus 34. And that will get you to 49.85%. Of course, another way you could have done it, it would be half of what it would be within three above and three below, which is 99.7. 99.7 divided by two is 49.85, just as FYI. And lastly, this last problem, what percentage um, of the time will Elena get between 21.4? and 31, so 21.4 to 31. So between one standard deviation below to two standard deviations above. So that's gonna to correspond to one standard deviation below to two standard deviations above. So 34 plus 34 plus 13.5, which is 81.5%.